asking and I want to obey. I'm willing and I'm yielded. I'm surrendered, Lord. Um, you begin a good work, Lord, bring it to completion. Bring it to maturity. Bring it to its fullness, what you intend. I don't want to uh, drop off halfway. I don't want to, you know, get off the train, you know, somewhere be before the destination. But Lord, I want to travel with you, journey with you all the way. Uh, you make it. You said you will make it happen. And so, God, you know, I'm, I'm just trusting. Right? Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that uh, Lord, this is your desire, Lord, that what the work that you've started in us, that you will bring it to completion, God, that you will bring it to fullness and to maturity, God. And Lord, we thank you, God, for we are connected with you. Your spirit is at work in us. Your word is at work in us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you promise that you will never let go of us. Lord, and uh, Father God, you are looking to us, Lord, with all the um, Lord uh, uh, potential and everything that you've placed in us, Father God, and your desire is that the gifts that you've placed in us, the call that you've placed upon us, the vision that you've given us, God, and uh, everything, all the desires that you've put in us, God, that, Lord, that we will walk in it, Father God, that we will obey, that we will, uh, Lord, fully walk in it enthusiastically, God, and you will bring it to completion, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the various stages that we are in, Lord, that we are all works of progress and works in progress. And Lord, we thank you that, uh, that today can be a better day than yesterday, that today can be a even mature and uh, day than yesterday, and that today can be something, Lord, added to our lives than yesterday, God, um, because of your work in us, God. And we, we trust that you're doing this and we yield ourselves to you, surrender ourselves to you. We give you all the praise at this time and we give you the glory in Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So let's uh, start. I think we are nearing the end of Ephesians, right? Uh, this is the last chapter, chapter six. And um, I think we came to, I think, verse. Um, verse 10, verse 11. So we'll just quickly review verse 10 and 11. So chapter 6 starts with the instructions to, um, Ephesians chapter 6 uh, starts with the instructions to uh, masters, instructions to bond servants, um, instructions, uh, you know, of about how to do the word, work, sorry, um, you know, not half-heartedly, not, uh, not even not just when people are watching but to to do it wholeheartedly and so and also instructions to the masters you know don't threaten um, don't uh, you know, understand that you yourself have a heavenly uh, in the heavenly master that who's uh, who's you know looking uh, over over you so uh, with all these words uh, he instructs the um, you know these different people right Ephesians 5 there's instructions for husbands and wives uh, and so on and uh, Ephesians 6 also you know about parenting or fathers um, uh, how to bring uh, and also to children how to bring up uh, fathers how to bring up how, how not to do how not to exasperate or, or cause them to you know provoke uh, the children and also children you know this is how you respond to your parents this is how you relate to your parents right so, yeah, so in, in chapter 6 and verse 10, we see this. Let's read that verse again. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Okay, so he's saying be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And uh, and that's, uh, yeah, you, know, you know, it's like a final, uh, you know, he's, he's almost about to close the letter. And he says, you know, here's an important thing. You know, normally in an epistle, uh, of course, every Every word, every section is important. There are important, uh, you know, um, instructions, important commandments throughout, right? Um, but we also do notice that, uh, you know, the what we start out with, you know, is, is of is of priority. Right? So this, is, this is the first thing that I want to tell you because that's the thing that is upon his heart. Okay, so uh, we can we can uh, derive at that saying, okay. You know, this is the first thing that's on his heart, and this is the first thing that he's actually putting up, putting out there. And also the last thing, you know, finally, I don't, I, I want you to remember this. 
I, I don't want you to forget this. I want you to remember this. So that is what he says. You know, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Like we saw last time, we saw that, you know, he's he, using three words, which uh, uh, three different Greek words there, strong, power, might. Okay, three different words which are used there, which talk about uh, something that is uh, powerful, the power of God, uh, especially, you know, let's, let's say, for example, if you look at the word strong, it talks about the, the explosive power, you know, uh, like how when an explosive or an explosive material like a dynamite, maybe it explodes and uh, there's so much of power, energy that is released in that explosion. It causes a lot of, you know, if you, uh, in a quarry, right, if we, if we actually plug in that dynamite, it breaks the rock. You know, it's, huge sections of the rock are come dislodged and that's why they use explosives in the quarry. Right? It just brings, uh, I mean, becomes pieces, small pieces, right? So uh, it's it's like that. Be strong in the Lord. So it's saying, you know, this is the kind of strength that you need to be having in yourself. Right? The explosive power of God. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power, so that word used there is kratos, which means something that is tangible, visibly demonstrated power. Okay, it's not doesn't talk about influential power or authority. So it's talking about raw, demonstrated power, strength. Right? So he's saying, you know, be strong in that. You need to be strong, which means that it is available for the believer. It's available for you and I. Right? So be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So that word is kus, which means uh, force or ability or strength. Right, so three very strongly uh, um, interlinked words, interconnected words in meaning. Is um, he, using that to say, "Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might." So, this is something which is available for the believer. Okay, now you might look at your whole whole life and say, you know, you're like your own life. Say, I'm I'm not strong. I'm not strong enough spiritually. I feel that I'm weak spiritually. I feel that you know I'm lacking something. Well. The instruction from scripture is be strong. Be strong in the Lord and, and in the power of his might. Be strong. And, uh, and it's something which means that it is something which is available for the believer. Right? So it's available for the believer all times to be put on display all the time. And it is something that we need to be intentionally strong in. Right? We need to be walking in it's something that every believer young and old needs to walk in so it's something amazing um, this is for us right as much as christ likeness or the character of god is something that god would want us to walk in to you know to to, to display to the world you know his wisdom his revelation his love his compassion his forgiveness uh, he wants that to be seen in us through the Holy Spirit, right? Galatians, we saw the, the fruit of the Spirit is this, like the end result of the work of the Holy Spirit is this love and joy and peace and faithfulness and goodness and, and, and all these wonderful things the Holy Spirit brings about. In the same way, the same Holy Spirit who works in us is the, is the resurrection power of Christ. Right? God who resurrected brought about Jesus from the dead. He brought about Jesus, he resurrected power, Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the creative, explosive uh, power or strength or ability of the Holy Spirit. And it's the same Holy Spirit who resides in us, who's at work in us. Okay, And that is why Paul says, be strong in the Lord. Right? Tap in, receive from, walk in and put on display or demonstrate this power. Okay, So as the instruction that we see in um, 1 Corinthians and, and verse, uh, verse, verse 14 um, and, um, and verse 1, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Desire the work of, because the work of the Holy Spirit. The display of the Holy Spirit is through the 
gifts of the Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit, or power of God, is put on display, is expressed through one way, is through the gifts of the Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are expressions of um, the power of God in a believer and through a believer. So desire that, right? Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, desire the anointing of God, desire to be filled with the power of God. Okay, so, so he, he says this, and then the verse on second, uh, the verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. Okay, so we need to put on and the same verse, same word is used in Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, um, you know, this is what he says. Um, Ephesians 4 and verse 22, right? Put off the old man and put on the new, right? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24 says that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, the true, right, uh, in true righteousness and holiness. So this word put on, okay, which means that we, we need to be responsible for walking in this. We need to be intentional about uh, walking in this. He's saying, put on the new man. The same way he's saying, put on the whole armor of God. Okay, that, what is the, uh, what is the objective? Or what, why does he want us to put on? So that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay, so, to stand up against the wiles of the devil, we need the armor of God. Okay. And it has been something that has been provided for the believer, which is available for the believer, which has been provided for the believer. And now the believer needs to, you know, the disciple or the believer needs to walk in it, intentionally walk in it, put on the new man or put on the armor of God. Uh, in order to stand against the wiles of the devils. Now, the word wiles means schemes. Okay, so he's always scheming or doing something, uh, strategizing to bring down the believer, okay, to bring down, to, to cause the believer to fall down, to bring destruction uh, upon the believer. So it says, against the wiles of the enemy. <laughs> Sorry. So all the tricks of the enemy. All the strategies of the enemy. So whatever the enemy is, uh, you know, uh, in his cunningness and uh, deceitfulness and, and trickery, right? he wants to bring down, he wants to make the believer fall. Now you be strong, put on the whole armor of God and stand against this, withstand the uh, the uh, 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 works of the enemy. Okay, so, so, so the, this shows us that the armor of God is strong enough, is well able to stand against the works of the enemy. And another thing that we learn is that the armor of God is required to stand against the works of the enemy. Like we cannot do it in our strength. Uh, we have to do it with the resources and the abilities that God provides. Okay. But we need to do it. We need to stand against it. We need to be intentional. Okay. Yes, we can pray and say, Lord, protect us. But the Lord says, would say, hey, I've given you the resources, use it. Right? Okay. So, uh, like la uh, last class, we saw the all the pieces of the armor. So, Paul uses the, uh, the armor that the a Roman soldier would use. Right? All the pieces of the armor that the Roman soldier would use. We looked at, uh, you know, the starting from the 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 belt and how the belt actually holds all the pieces together it uh, securely so that nothing is loose nothing is you know uh, nothing is hanging nothing is loose it's all tight and snug and comfortable and uh, so the, it, the 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 person can engage in in a in a battle right so you know i'm sure you know if you're in athletics if you're in any sports you'll make sure that you know you're your the whatever you're wearing the shoe is tight right the 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 you know if you're wearing a tracks or if you're wearing shorts or whatever that it's it's fastened on properly like the socks and shoes and everything and and whatever you know if you're playing a let's say cricket you'll you make sure that the the pads are on tight 
right your gloves are on tight your helmet and everything is on tight so you know so you won't be uncomfortable playing the game right you won't be in any form of discomfort you want to be at your best you want to give your best you want to run fast you want to play well you want to concentrate so the same thing um, this belt would do okay so we saw each and every piece the breastplate which is uh, protecting both forward and uh, i mean both in front and at the back um, and it's how it's a heavy uh, piece it's a piece of metal two pieces of metal connected with brass rings um, and we also saw the shoes the kind of shoes uh, it's, it's again a piece of metal which has spikes at the end at the uh, you know at the bottom of the sole and which is again used for attack and protection and so on then we looked at the shield which is like four to five pieces of uh, uh, you know the big shield which is used in battle is actually as as big as a door as big as tall as the show, uh, soldier himself and uh, it's a, it could be a full length metal which has several layers of leather on it right and it could be sometimes dipped in water so that it can even when the arrows are fired which are arrows are you know uh, fired upon the uh, soldier um, sometimes the arrows are set on fire right it's lit up and then so that you know it, it brings even more destruction it burns right but this shield is able to put out the fire um, it is the leather is wet uh, because it's been dipped in water and, and it's huge it's and it's strong and it's able to put out then we looked at the helmet which is uh, protecting the head the protecting the face and and even if one is looking the other way you know it protects the soldier then we looked at the sword the sword which is uh, sharp the sword which has both the edge edges which are sharp so uh, it is uh, it is meant to inflict damage uh, and uh, upon the enemy and also a long spear okay, uh, a lance a long spear which can be thrown like a javelin uh, and <clears throat> from a distance it can you know hurt the enemy okay so so what is the parallel that we see um what is the parallel that we see in scripture so he says that uh, uh, you know uh, this you need to put on that you may be able to stand up and he goes on to explain in verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Okay. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. These are not natural human enemies. Okay. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So, um, so he's talking about a hierarchy here. He's also making a difference between what is uh, the enemy is actually spiritual in nature and not flesh and blood. The human being is not your enemy. The battle is spiritual. The enemy is actually uh, spiritual in nature, right? So he's talking about uh, literally a hierarchy, four levels. Like one is principalities, powers rulers uh, of uh, uh, you know um, rulers uh, of the darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places right? spiritual hosts of wickedness so all these kinds of um, you know these these make up our spiritual enemies right so but what is able to stop the enemy it's the armor of god Right. All, against all this, the armor of God is enough. Right. And so he goes on to explain, um, you, I mean, he says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God, verse 13. Right. So this is the enemy. The enemy is spiritual. The enemy is, is wicked, is crafty, is deceitful, is, uh, is lying. But when you put on the armor, you will be able to withstand and having done all, you will be able to stand against the enemy. You will be able to stand up to the attacks of the enemy. Okay, so so here uh, some things that we we need to conclude, or we need to you know come to a place of decision and tell ourselves this is it that the armor of God, what God has provided us, 
he has clothed us with is enough, is more than enough to defeat, to withstand any form of spiritual attack. Any form of spiritual attack. To stand against and to overcome, to come out victorious. Right? Um, so it, that is that is enough. So it says, um, there stand uh, therefore, verse 14, having girded your waist with truth. So the so the the armor, first piece that we see, the belt, it's actually the belt of truth. It's a it's a it's a belt which actually undergirds the soldier. It actually goes around the waist and it's the belt of truth. Okay, so truth, this belt, just like how the belt was holding all the other pieces together, even the sheet, sheath in which the uh, the sword is kept and, and you know other pieces of armor are fastened to the belt. Now this belt is the belt of truth. Okay. So it's the truth itself. It's not deception, it is not compromise, it is not lie, but it's the truth. So this truth is something which is very, very important for the believer. Okay. Very important for the believer. Truth as defined by the Lord Jesus. You know, sometimes people say, okay, this is true for me, this is true for you. you know, what is your truth? You know, sometimes people talk about truth as if it's very, very relative. Relative meaning, okay, you know, it, it's changing. Truth is changing. You know, that's what people sometimes say. Okay, this is true for me. This is what works for me. So this is true for me. And you know, what you believe and what works for you, you know, you take that and that's that could be true for you. Um, you know. But the thing is, truth as defined by the Lord. Okay, because the Lord, John chapter 14 and verse 6, the Lord Jesus says, I am the way, the truth. I am the way, the truth. John chapter 14, verse 6. And uh, when we look at uh, John 17 and verse 17, in this, uh, John 17 and verse 17, the Lord Jesus says, Sanctify them. He's praying to the Lord, to the Father, and He's saying, Sanctify them, the disciples, by your truth. Your word is truth. Okay, so He's, he's giving a definition, explanation of what is truth. The Father's word, the words, is truth. Okay, so it's eternal. John chapter 1 starts that way. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. So here saying that your Word is truth. So Jesus himself, the living Word, he says, I am the way, the truth. So whatever uh, you know, instructions or whatever definitions of reality that God brings out that is truth. And that is truth. It's not like it may be truth, but it is truth. Okay. And this is what will hold everything else together. It's so important to have the belt of truth, to know the truth. Right? So how do I know the truth when I grow in my relationship with Jesus? When I grow in my relationship with the truth, Right? As I grow in my understanding of the truth, Jesus Himself, then all the lies and all the, you know, the deception of the enemy just keeps falling off our lives. Okay, because sometimes we think, okay, we, we believe something to be true, and uh, it could be very well be a lie of the enemy. The enemy whispers certain lies, and these whispers. Uh, you know, we we catch on to it, we hold on to it. It could be some form of a fear. Okay, uh, you, know, you 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 can you know indulge in sin, or it could be you can never be this. You can never walk in righteousness. You can never walk in truth. You know, some life thing. I remember you know once um, at a youth camp uh, when we were all young, when we were all youth, and I had attended the youth camp with my. Uh, with my relative, who was also a young, you know, my cousin, you know, we were all same age, and we were all teenagers then. 
so after one particular session we were praying and he and i were in the same um you know we we're supposed to pray for each other so then i asked him you know how was it how are things so he said you know i i keep hearing a voice saying that if you make a decision to follow jesus you will never be able to keep that decision right i keep hearing that voice i keep i i feel as if someone is you know telling me i'll never be able to keep that decision i will fall i will and i don't so i don't want to make a decision that i don't i won't be able to keep right so in other words this voice was instructing him to compromise this voice was instructing him not to follow the truth but then when we know the truth when we understand what the truth is when we grow in our understanding of the truth then we will be able to discern that hey this is a voice of lie it is not of the truth right this instruction is not from truth is not true or this uh, explanation of what will happen or this description of my life uh, of what could happen and what what will be is not true because it's a lie right so so these are some you know some ways by which lies come to us but we need to know the truth when we know the truth the lord jesus says you know the holy spirit will lead us into all the truth and the truth will set us free now that's the ability that truth um, has the truth will set us free set us free from bondage set us free from lies set us free from intimidation of the enemy set us free okay. um the truth is uh, what the word of god is what jesus says you know who jesus is and uh, and also we see that where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom and that's another expression of the spirit of god he brings freedom truth always brings freedom or liberty right liberates the person from all kinds of bondages from all kinds of things holding that person back truth liberates right and true freedom is not being able to do whatever you want to do but to be able to walk in righteousness right that's true freedom so know the truth believe the truth think the truth okay so so that's very important part you know, i need to think my thoughts need to be true my thoughts need to be true thought only then my speech and action will be true right because thoughts influence our imagination and thoughts influence our the words we speak and what we speak about others what we speak about ourselves so we need to have thoughts that are true and we need to speak the truth and we need to live the truth okay so we can know and believe and think and speak and live the truth Okay. and um you know since uh, you know the lord jesus says you know thy word is truth um when we take time to read the word of god stay in the word of god meditate on the word of god you know we will be saturated with the truth be filled with the truth okay and this truth is very very important because it's it's like a belt it's the belt of truth which holds all the other areas of or other aspects of the armor other pieces of the armor together to be able to function well okay without truth everything else falls apart just think about it the shield we're not able to use it the sword we're not able to use it right um or any other thing that you can talk think about you know the breastplate it's shaky because it is not fastened to the truth it is not attached to the truth right so truth is very important otherwise for the believer everything else falls falls apart to be true to oneself to be true to god to be true to others right that's why truth is very important and uh, paul over and over again in instructions he says you know let each one you know stop speaking lies to its neighbor okay. um, so that is why he says that because truth is important and truth is uh, yeah, is a very character nature of god himself right so um 
yeah, uh, Ephesians 4 and verse 25, you know, therefore, putting away lying, putting away lying. It's talking about put on the new man. Um, verse 24 says, Ephesians 4, verse 24, put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness, put on the new man. And then in verse 25, put away lying which is the opposite of putting on the new man, put away lying. Okay, so we move on to the next one, which is breastplate of righteousness. So breastplate of righteousness, uh, which is um, uh, a piece of armor which protects the believer uh, in, in right in front and also, you know, uh, behind. Okay, well, let me just uh, share the screen. Sorry, I thought I was doing that. Okay. Okay, so we see the, uh, you see the, breastplate it's protecting you know it's a uh, uh, right at the back front and the back so without this righteousness we will make ourselves vulnerable okay so this uh, it's a defensive piece and uh, and it can be an offensive piece as well okay uh, this part uh, because we can fearlessly we can walk fearlessly run into attack of the enemy because of this righteousness, okay? because um, to to inflict any kind of to, to make progress in the battle, we need to run into the battle, right? and to be able to run into the battle, what gives us confidence? It will be the the breastplate, right? Because it's protecting you from front and behind and the back. So the righteousness of when we say righteousness, we're talking about the righteousness of God. It's not self righteousness. Or self being self righteous, but it's the righteousness that comes from God. Okay, um, so when we look at righteousness, we see um, several other references also which talk about this. You know, Second Corinthians six, um, which talk about righteousness. Second Corinthians six and verse. Um, okay, uh, verse seven. Right. It says, by the word of truth, um, you know, probably from verse 4, okay, but in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. Okay, we, we commend ourselves in all things as ministers of God. And he goes on to explain a lot of things. Okay, what are those things? Okay, so... He writes about all that. And then one of the things that he writes about in verse 7 is, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand, on the left. So he's talking about you know, righteousness as an armor. Okay. Um, so in Ephesians, he talks about righteousness as a, you know, as specifically as a, as a breastplate. So there he talks about on the left hand and then on the right hand, righteousness as an armor. So we see that... Um, uh, righteousness. When you look at righteousness, we need to see, okay, this right standing with God, first and foremost. Okay. Are we in right standing with God? Okay. Because we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. Right? It says that uh, we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ because he took, uh, let me just read that verse. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Okay, so in Christ, that we might become the righteousness of God. So we have, in Christ, we have been made the righteousness of God. Um, because he carried our sin. Who knew no sin, he was made sin for us. So in Christ, we become the opposite of that, which is we become the righteousness of God in Christ. Okay. So, so the thing is this: to be strong in that, right? To to have that all the time, the armor of righteousness. Okay? To have that understanding, to be strong in that understanding that we have been washed by the blood of Jesus. That we've been made right by the blood of Jesus. That we have that right standing with God. Okay. Only then can we go into battle with all confidence. 
right? Because otherwise, we might take a few steps and then you might have this thought, oh, but will God really be with me because I did this, 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 and this? Or in the past, you know, I behaved like this, or I said this, you know, all those things of the past, you know, coming back to our memories at times, you know, of intense spiritual battle, you know, and the enemy seems to whisper, you know, you did that so many years back, or you did that, you know, as recently as yesterday. So, you know, how can you fight the battle? And Satan seems to say, you know, how can you have authority? How can you have authority? How can you, uh, you know, <clears throat> do anything against me? Satan seems to say, because you're one of mine. You did this. But that is when we need to be strong and say, no, no, I've been washed by the blood of Jesus. Right? I have been clothed with the righteousness of God himself. I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes, uh, we, we might have fallen, <clears throat> but the scripture says, though a righteous man might fall seven times, the Lord will lift him up. Okay, so the immediate thing is to get back to God in repentance, right? 1 John 1 9 says that he who, you know, um, when we, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So, so the Lord Jesus is well able to do that. And he wants to, uh, you know, he has done that. So he wants to restore any anyone who has fallen he wants to restore so we don't lose our righteousness when we fall but we we definitely lose our you know our sense of our understanding of righteousness and we we do we don't have that confidence right so we need to definitely get back to fellowship with god you know there is a breach in fellowship right there seems to be fear. There seems to be that lack of confidence. But when we get back to God, when, when we restore that relationship with the Lord, um, you know, we, we, are, we are walking confidently again in the righteousness that he has provided us. Okay. So we need to do that. Uh, we, re we need to refuse to accept the prompting of the enemy when he prompts us to the things of the past. Okay, when he promises about the uh, maybe failures of the past or regrets of the past. And to be very adamant about that, to be very stubborn about that, to say, no, I'm, this is what is, this is the truth. This is what has happened. So I will hold on to the truth. Okay? And uh, we'll notice that the, the pull of the enemy or the prompting of the enemy becomes weaker and weaker and weaker as we become stronger and stronger in holding on Right, in being strong or in standing strong in the righteousness that God has clothed us with. Okay, so that does not mean that I go and do anything and say I still say you know I am clothed in righteousness. No, this clothing in righteousness too should will give us the confidence to walk righteously, right? To indulge in righteous acts, to to be confident uh, and and to walk in righteousness. Right. Okay. The other thing that we see is the gospel. So uh, it says, let me just go back. It says, uh, put on, uh, you know, having girded your waist with truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. This gospel of peace. You know, this, the gospel, the good news, brings us to a place of peace with God, peace with man, peace within oneself. Self, right? So this, uh, uh, so the context here is to sharing of the good news, the good news, the message of salvation. Uh, so when and we, and we, you know, that is when uh, uh, that readiness to do that, to share this gospel of peace, is also something that protects us, protects our walk, our walk, um, as we, you know, uh, uh, as we walk with God. As we walk, which means to as we live out our life, this readiness to share the gospel protects our feet. Okay. So as we have experienced this peace, you know, when we share, when we have the readiness to share this message of peace, you know, we 
we walk in peace with God. We walk in peace with one another. And uh, this peace, the supernatural peace of God, uh, it Philippians 4 talks about how it guards our hearts and mind. Okay, this peace of God, how it guards our hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Um, so <clears throat> it is also something that gives us discernment, something that um, reigns. As believers, we are called to reign in it. Okay, uh, and this peace is, is like an umpire. It gives us the discernment to make wise choices, right? So we are called to walk in this peace. <clears throat> um, and uh, it also, you know, it, is, it protects us as we walk. It stabilizes us as we walk. Now, just like what shoes will do, protects us. And, uh, and even as we look at the, <clears throat> sorry, as we look at the shoes of the Roman soldier with those spikes and, uh, you know, like long nails uh, at the at the bottom of it, it walks causes us to walk in different kinds of environments. Okay, in different kinds of terrain. Like maybe the environment changes. We are in one place. We go to another place. The environment is different. Challenges are different. Uh, challenges maybe are many, but we are we are able to walk, and it's because of our readiness. Um, to share this gospel of peace, which, which, which you know, that the peace that we have within, the peace that we are called to walk in, uh, is is also part of that, and which gives us the confidence, and which gives us the ability to walk no matter what kind of challenges there are. Right? Okay. Then we come to the shield of faith, verse sixteen. Above all taking the shield of faith with which we will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Okay, so it says above all, meaning, you know, um, after all this, you know, don't forget to take up the shield. Take the shield take, always carry with you the shield of faith. And we know that it's a, it's a large piece of armor which covers the entire so soldier from top to bottom, from the head to the feet. Um, it covers the soul, soldier, so it's it, this faith uh, is something that shields us and also puts off the fiery arrows, arrows of fire, which come from the enemy. Okay. So he says, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, all the fiery darts. Everything that the enemy shoots at you, you will be able to quench or put out. Now, it could be, uh, you know, what possibly could the enemy throw at us? What possibly, you know, what are those fiery or arrows of fire that the enemy can shoot at us? Right? It, um, it could be... Um, uh, Accusation about us, it could be lies about us, it could be arrows of fear, right? it could be arrows of unbelief, unbelief in the words of God. Um, just like in the garden, you know, did God really say that? You know, causing unbelief, causing us to question the truth of God, the plans of God. Did God really say that? Is what Satan asked uh, Eve, right? And sometimes the statement, you know, "Surely you will not die," right? Again, a statement of the evil one, statement of the devil. Surely you will not die. Surely, you know, if you indulge in it, if you if you do this, if you commit this act against God, surely nothing will happen. No, nothing will happen. Don't worry. Just go ahead. You'll be fine. And also in the temptation uh, of the Lord Jesus, you see what he does. You know, If you are, if you're really the son of God, why don't you do this? Right? Causing, uh, almost, you know, inviting Jesus to follow his word rather than the words of the Lord. Okay. If you are truly this, you know, in other words, challenging our identity. Are you really this? 
you know, are you really the son of God? Are you really a child of God? Then, you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you try this? Enabling uh, or bringing us to a place of, uh, you know, even questioning that, right? Are you really this? So identity, uh, challenging our identity. And uh, the enemy also, you know, we see that uh, challenges uh, uh, our, you know, our worship of the Lord, the place that we have for God. You know, then he says, as he told Jesus, he said, if you, I will, I will give you all this. I'll give you everything you know, that belongs to me. I'll give you this. But you just need to follow me. You just need to worship me. The place that you have for God, you know, let that be second place. And you let something else be first place. But if you do that, then I'll give you, I'll promise this. I'll give you all this. Right? Makes an offer like that. So, so these are, you know, and, and on and on, and on right? Uh, you know, why don't you test God in this? And oh, why don't you, you know, bringing us to a place of assumption or presumption, right? Um, so we need to continue on in faith. And for that, we need the shield of faith. And, you know, the shield of faith, faith we know comes from God, comes from hearing the words of God. Right? That's why the Lord Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So this rhema, quickened word of God, you know, is required for the believer. It nourishes, strengthens the believer. And we also see that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God in Romans chapter 10. So um, faith is something spiritual that is produced by another spiritual, you know, material, which is the word of God. And so faith is produced by the word of God in our hearts. And we are made strong by the word of God. So this, this shield of faith is really something that we carry which puts out the, the all the accusation, lies, um, you know, temptations of the enemy, and uh, and it is it is the word of God which is able to put this out. Word of God, which is direct opposite or direct contrast to the lies, accusation, and so on. Every statement of the enemy. Okay, so we'll stop here, and we'll come back uh, a little after ten uh, and continue with. Okay.